Hi! You guys, it's raining outside, and so we're having a pajama day. Okay, so this one is a story about the Weedle on the Needle. See, what is that? Do you guys know? It kind of looks like the Tower of Americas, which is in Texas, but it's actually the Space Needle which is in Seattle, and I'm sure Albie and Augie know about the Space Needle, but I don't know if they know about the Weedle on the Needle. This is another classic story that we used to read when we were kids. It's a serendipity book. And then many years ago, before anybody lived in the Northwest, there lived a very happy creature called a Weedle. He was big, fat, and had a very large red nose. All day long, he would play tag with the other animals of the forest or just sit around sniffing flowers. <sighs> Delish. Uh-oh. One day while the Weedle was playing, he happened to look down on the bay and saw a whole ship full of men arrive. They immediately set about building and clearing the ground. As they worked, they whistled. <whistles> Can you whistle? The more they worked, the more they whistled, and all that whistling noise hurt the poor Weedle's ears, for he was very sensitive to whistling noises. <whistles> it was so bad that the Weedle could get absolutely no sleep at all. Day by day, he became grouchier and grouchier to the point of grumbling at all his friends in the forest. <whistles> Finally, the Weedle decided he must put a stop to all that whistling. He thought for a moment and then realized that if all those men didn't have all their tools, they wouldn't be happy and therefore they wouldn't whistle. So that night, he carefully stole all the tools, but the next morning, the men quickly made new tools and started whistling all over again. <whistles> Crafty men making tools. <clears throat> he grumbled. What am I ever going to do to make those people quit making that whistling noise so I can get some sleep? He decided that maybe the best thing to do was to scare them because when people are scared, they can't pucker. This is puckering. And when they can't pucker, they can't whistle. Can you be scared and pucker? He began creeping up behind them and growling at the top of his voice. And sure enough, those men were so scared that they couldn't whistle. But one time he growled at a very brave lumberjack and the lumberjack, to prove he wasn't scared, just whistled at the Weedle. Well, let me tell you, that just about scared the poor Weedle to death. He jumped back, put his hands over his ears and ran into the forest. Ah! It was then that the Weedle knew he could no longer n live near the bay. So he packed his belongings and moved away. See that guy? That lumberjack's just like, just whistling at him. He wandered far and wide, searching for some place that was far enough away from the men so he wouldn't have to listen to all that whistling and could get some sleep. He wandered farther into the forest until he came to the very top of Mount Rainier. <gasps> Albie and Augie, you guys live so close to Mount Rainier. He listened very carefully, and as he couldn't even hear the faintest of whistles, he unpacked his sleeping bag, his toothbrush with the squiggly on the end, and his white woolly pajamas. He quickly brushed his teeth, dressed in his pajamas, hopped into his sleeping bag, and fell fast asleep. He slept so hard that his big red nose went on and off just like a blinking light. But that didn't bother the Weedle, and he slept and he slept. In fact, he slept for many, many years, undisturbed, high on Mount Rainier. One day, years and years later, the Weedle began to toss and turn in his sleep, and suddenly he woke with a start. What was that? He grumbled. As he rubbed the sleep from his eyes, he yawned once, stretched twice, just like the dragon did, and then peeked over the edge of the mountain to see what was going on. <laughs> he kind of looks like the dragon peeking over the bridge, doesn't he? There, much to his surprise, he saw that the men had continued to build over the years and now had built almost to the edge of the mountain. But what was more alarming than that was the fact that everybody was whistling. Oh no, cried the Weedle. What am I ever going to do now? With all that noise, I'll never get back to sleep, he grumbled. The Weedle began pacing up and down the mountain, mumbling and grumbling all the while, and then his eyes lit up and a smile crossed his lips. I have it, he growled, and with that, he dug around in his positions until he found the biggest sack he owned. Then he went to the very edge of the mountain, and by standing on his tiptoes, he reached very carefully into the sky and grabbed a cloud. Can you guys stand on your tiptoes so high that you could reach the sky and grab a cloud? That would be so cool. Very gently, he started stuffing clouds into the bag until he had it as full as he could get. I want to grab a cloud. Look at his tippy toes. 
With the bag thrown over his shoulder, he set out for the source of his noisy problem, Seattle. Oh, there's Seattle. Guys, when he finally arrived, he looked for the tallest building around in order to complete his plan. He picked, out of all the buildings, the Space Needle. It's not the tallest building anymore. He carefully climbed to the top and gently laid down the bag of clouds. He looked all around and grumbled. This wouldn't be such a bad place to live if it weren't for all that whistling. For you see, all around the Space Needle, children were playing and the older people were working and they were all whistling. The Weedle reached into the bag, pulled out the biggest and wettest cloud and threw it high into the sky. The cloud hung there for a moment and then began to rain on all the people below. Now people in Seattle like the rain and rainy days are fun, but it's very hard to whistle on rainy days because your lips get so wet. Ho ho, shouted the Weedle. Now I shall have some peace and quiet. With the rain falling all around him, the Weedle stretched out on top of the Space Needle and once again fell fast asleep. He made all the rain happen. Soon, everybody in Seattle knew that the Weedle was responsible for all the rain, and finally, in desperation, the mayor went to the top of the Space Needle to see if he could get the Weedle to stop the rain, if only for a day, so that people could whistle again. Very gently, he shook the Weedle by the shoulder. Mr. Weedle, he said, please wake up. The Weedle rumbled and grumbled and finally woke up. What is it? He growled. Please, said the mayor, could you stop making it rain? The people are becoming sadder and sadder because they can't whistle while they work. The Weedle then told the mayor his sad story. I never meant to hurt you or make anyone sad, he said, but I just can't sleep with all that whistling going on. The mayor thought for a moment. I know what we shall do, Mr. Weedle. I'll be back tomorrow morning with the answer to all our problems. And with that, he went back to town with his plan in motion. The mayor quickly called all the sail makers in Seattle and had them bring all the cotton they could find to the Seattle center. Then when they all arrived, they began sewing the cotton together. They sewed pink cotton onto yellow cotton and blue cotton onto red cotton. And by early morning, they had finished the task. Lots of colorful cotton. I've been doing some sewing too. Then all the people of Seattle with the mayor at the lead marched to the Space Needle and the Sleeping Weedle and they all stood around as the mayor once again woke the slumbering monster. Ah, what is it? The Weedle mumbled as he woke. Ahem, <clears throat> said the mayor as he cleared his throat. Mr. Weedle, as you can't sleep with all the whistling and all the people of Seattle are sad when they can't whistle, we hereby present you with these earmuffs so that you may sleep in peace. And with that, he gave the Weedle the biggest most colorful pair of earmuffs you have ever seen. The Weedle placed them over his ears and smiled for the first time in years. Aww. The people were so happy they began whistling with joy, but the Weedle didn't mind because now he couldn't hear it. He slowly folded the bag of clouds and with the bag as a pillow, he fell fast asleep. And when he slept so soundly that once again, his nose began to blink. And guess what? You can see his nose blinking on top of the space needle at night, can't you? There's a Weedle on the needle. I know just what you're thinking, but if you look up late at night, you'll see his red nose blinking. Yay! See and.